All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Employer Brand Insider. This is a super special one because we are talking to my college recruiter who has moved on to do bigger and better things now with her life. But a um, big part of my career and me getting into video and all this stuff in the first place. Um, and she is now a recruiter at Staffing Strong. They're an agency um, that kind of places marketing and creative professionals and stuff. So, uh, Amy, welcome on. I'm really excited to talk to you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. It's good to connect with you again. It's been a few years, I know. Yeah, a few years. It feels like a hundred, <laughs> but uh, I don't. Right? We won't say how many exactly no, it's been. We don't need to talk about years. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> cool. So um, I'm excited to talk to you because I haven't had a chance to talk to like an outside recruiter, you know, someone that's part of an right. agency on the show yet. And so everyone's been internal so far. And I think this is a unique opportunity to kind of discuss like that relationship between mm -hmm. the internal team, the recruiting team and an agency. You know, a lot of companies right. obviously work with an agency to fill the roles and find people that work within their culture and stuff like that. So that's definitely what I want to dive into with you today. But kind of sure. before we get there, just give us some background. How did you get into the recruiting world? What drew you into it? And, uh, you know, just give us a little give us a little story here. Yeah. So like you said, I was actually working for the college as a career advisor. So definitely helping students and graduates with their career search and resume writing and interview tips and portfolio building, you know, all the things they need to get out there and get their first job. Um, as you know, where you went to school and where I was working, they closed their doors like many other um, education <laughs> systems throughout the U.S. Um, so I was, you know, on the job hunt and just happened to connect with somebody at Staffing Strong, you know, recruiting me actually for a different role they were working on. Um, and I just hit it off with them and had a conversation and like your background aligns with what we do just on a, a bigger scale. Would you be interested in recruiting? And I was like, sure, you know, let's give it a try. Um, and I stayed in touch with them probably four or five months before I started working for them. And I've been there ever since. It's been five and a half years now. You know, it's just a different person you're working with. Now you're dealing with those experienced executive level people or senior level people versus students who are just coming out of school. Um, so it's exciting just to see the progression, you know, going from an educational standpoint, fresh grads to these seasoned professionals who have amazing careers and backgrounds that I get to work with now. Yeah, you definitely were coming from a position of like, these are kids who barely know what the heck they're doing in this world. So I, right. I assume that and must they just want to be a big movie star or yeah. <laughs> something like that, or a big film director, or, you know, interesting. Yeah. Um, roles they had. Or roles. random dudes making <laughs> YouTube and uh, LinkedIn clips, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Several of those guys running around. Yeah, yeah. Well, that must have been an interesting transition, though, to go from, you know, people who are just getting their start to, uh, you know, people who are established and maybe a little bit easier to find homes for. Totally. Yeah, it's definitely different because they are experienced, right? They have their portfolios put together. They have resumes. They can talk to you about their experience where students couldn't quite get there yet. So it was definitely a different dynamic and it was exciting to learn from them too about what they had been doing out in the creative field and what they were capable of doing. Um, so it's, it's definitely been a good experience. Cool. So before we kind of dive into the meat of what we're going to get into that relationship internal and agency, yeah. um, can you just tell me like what some of the most common things you see from job seekers are when they're coming to you, they're looking for work, uh, like what are they looking for typically? They're looking for a good home, a good culture. Um, they want to enjoy the work that they're doing. They look at it, you know, as a career, not just a job, not just a stepping stone. They're looking for someplace they could potentially be the rest of their career. Um, but definitely what I hear a lot is it's all about the culture, right? Because we spend more time with our work family than we do our own family. So we have to enjoy it. We have to enjoy the people we're working with. Um, but the other piece of that too is the work that they're doing. They want to 
connect with it. They want to be passionate about the work they are creating and the work that they're doing. So those are some of the big things I see. Obviously, salary plays into that, location of the job, you know, things like that. But it all boils down to just the connection with the company, the work and the team, I think. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And I think, you know, there's probably a misconception that most people are just looking to always advance to the next level in their career, you know, and I'm sure there is always, yeah. uh, that's always a totally. piece of it. Right. But like, right. Um, I don't know. To me, it seems like those other elements maybe don't get measured as much or don't get accounted for as much where it's like, well, right. yeah, I do want to advance, but I also want, like you're talking about, it's like, this is a, this is a new family that I'm stepping into. This is a new life. Right. That's, you know, at least, 40 hours of my week that uh, that I'm going to be committing yeah. to for, you know, nobody takes a job thinking they're going to be there for six months and then they're out of there. Right. 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 Yeah. They hope not anyway, although it does happen. But I also talk to the people that have been at that executive level. Right. So they've been the high level strategy um, execution, managing a team. And then they come down to a point where they're like, you know what, I just want to do the work anymore or I just want to do the work now. I don't want to manage the team. You know, I, I've done that. I've gone as high up the ladder as I can go. I'm not looking for that anymore. I'm looking for more work-life balance. I'm not the executive ready to, or I'm not the executive wanting to do 70, 80 hours anymore. I want, you know, 40 to 50 hours. So I see people coming down off that high level role too. Um, which is an interesting dynamic. Yeah, kind of surprising, but I guess it makes sense, you know, if you yeah. learn that you connect more to doing the work than, I mean, managing a team right. is a whole nother beast. <laughs> yeah, right. And some people don't like to manage and that's okay too. Yeah. You know, and, and some people, let's be honest, aren't good at managing and they shouldn't be managing. So they should just stick to doing what they know, which is the work, so. Yeah, I think, you know, I've been in that position before where you kind of take on a little bit more and it's like, oh, this is a totally different job. You know, it's, it's right. a, you know, it's like the stuff that I am passionate about and love is this is not what yeah. that is. like they're doing this stuff right. that I want to be doing, you know, so exactly. I get that for sure. So exactly. I think, you know, something that I think could be interesting to talk about is the fact that you're working with a lot of companies trying to fill mm -hmm. their positions at the same time, right. working with a lot of different people, looking for different opportunities and finding that culture match between those people mm -hmm. obviously can be a challenge. And I think in your position specifically, right. you know, you might have 20 different companies. Each one has its own culture and has its own, right. you know, things that they're looking for and all those people. So how do you manage yeah. to a understand what these companies really are like um, right. behind the scenes and make sure you get the right people in there, um, not just to fill the positions, but like to truly be like, this is a great match for you. You're going to love this place, you know, right. and, and yeah. have lasting staying power, you know, when you place these people. Yeah. So what we like to do is we like to set up conversations, even tours of the companies. You know, we like to see what their environment's like, what's the vibe in the office, what, how is it set up? Um, but we like to connect with the hiring manager, right? The person that this person we're hiring for is going to be reporting into and just get an overview of what the work looks like. What is that workload? What is the team like? How many people are on their team? What is everybody's role? Um, how do all of these pieces fit together and where does this new person kind of fit into that role? Um, what are they looking for? Is it more of a skills match, you know, certain software tools? Is it more of a personality match for them and they're going to teach the tools? Um, what have they seen in other interviews that they've liked, that they haven't liked? Um, you know, if this is a backfill position because somebody left or they had to let somebody go, what was that person missing? It's just fully understanding what they want out of this person and just getting becoming one with them really like a, becoming an extension of their company and their team so as I am talking to candidates I can say hey this is who you're reporting to they have a team of 10 um, they have all of these different roles on this team um, here's what they're looking for skill set wise personality wise and just really getting to know the company the culture so then 
we can sell it to the candidate, you know, because a lot of times, yeah, I have a job description. I can read it, right? Hmm. We can all read job descriptions, but tell me about the company. Tell me what it's like behind the doors. Is it, you know, are they, is it a cubicle environment? Is it office environment? Is it just this open room and everybody collaborates? Like, what does that environment look like? Because that means a lot to people versus what's written on the paper. Because we know that's a laundry list of job duties that every company puts together. What are the important pieces that that company is really hiring for that maybe isn't listed on that job description? Yeah, I mean, I've been in that position, you know, going through an agency before um, and been presented with, you know, specifically, you know, I was presented with an opportunity one time seemed really cool on paper and like the the agency the external agency kind of was like yeah it's cool you know they didn't know much about it you know or they didn't right. give me much about it but they're like right. but here's the here's the salary you'd make you know it's pretty great right um, and that's what they try and sell you on is the salary but that's great it's you know if it's a salary that is what you're looking for maybe it's above what you're looking for that's awesome but usually those salaries come with a price so what is that price is it a toxic environment on the inside? You know, there's a lot of companies that just don't have a good vibe. And so they're constantly running through people because they'll hire somebody and they're like, oh my gosh, this is not what I signed up for. And they'll leave. And so we have to have those conversations with clients too. Like, hey, why do you guys, have you replaced this person six times in the last three years? Like what's going on here? Is this an internal thing? And sometimes it's like, yeah, we realized there was, one person on the team that was toxic or a bad manager or something. And we've, we've, you know, relieved that person. They're no longer here. So we're ready to start over. Um, and that's great, but it's really understanding. Is that going to be the case, you know, again, or is this going to happen again? Um, you know, it, it, it's really about the culture, I think for a lot of people, um, what they're looking for. Yeah. And that must be a struggle for you guys sometimes, right? Because you don't have control over, you know, the company culture of these companies you're trying to help, but, um, but your success kind of rides on that, right? You know, it's like if they're, you know, if these internal recruiting teams and internal HR teams aren't willing to be more of a collaborator, with the agencies, then you're kind of just stuck selling whatever you're selling, you know? Right. And it's hard because a lot of times that is what happens. They'll just say, here, I have a job description. I need you to help me fill this, but tell us a little bit more. Let us talk to the hiring manager. Cause I know sometimes the recruiters don't get all the information either at times. And so we like to go directly to the hiring manager who's going to be interviewing for this role, you know, the management person for this role, um, because they can really tell us the ins and outs of what they're looking for. And that's what we need to know. We want to be kind of a partner to you, um, but you have to give us some of that information so we can share it and we can help sell your company to these potential candidates. Um, And there is a right spot for everybody, right? Like if there's an organization that's highly structured, they follow everything to a T. There's a person that'll fit in there. But then there's other people like creatives, right? Sometimes we're all over the place as creatives working on different projects. And so a company that's more open to that, you know, has some more flexibility. Um, it, it's just good to know specifically what that company expects from the candidate and kind of understanding what um, goals are you going to have for this new person for the first 30 days. 60 days, 90 days. What does that look like? So we can set the expectations for this candidate. Here's what they're looking for you to do in these first few months of employment. Is this something that aligns with what you are wanting to do? Um, You know, is this going to work, you know, with your career goals? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And to me, you know, when I hear you say that, I think like, Well, obviously it's in their best interest to provide you with as much as they can, because if you get, you know, a top tier person, you know, a top tier talent coming to you saying, Hey, I'm ready for a career change. I'm ready for something. Obviously you're going to want to stick them somewhere that is working with you better to help you understand. It's like those, those companies that work better with you, with their agency, they're just going to get preferential treatment, right? Because 
totally. you know, they're yeah. putting in the work to collaborate more than they are just saying like, yeah. hey, here's a list, like I need these filled. And it's so funny because sometimes, you know, we do have that relationship where they'll give us all this information we ask. They're open if we call or shoot an email with some last minute questions. And then it, it always happens where I'll talk to a candidate after an interview and they're like, hey, did you know this about the company? Or did you know they're really looking for this and not this? And I'm like, I didn't know that. You know, no matter what, we always still learn more from our candidates interviewing too. They give us more insight. And I don't know if that's because the employer likes to open up more to that candidate because they are in the field they're hiring for, where me, I'm a recruiter, right? So I'm not a creative, I'm not a designer or a copywriter or marketing director. And so I don't know if they just feel more comfortable speaking more freely about the position to them because they get it, they understand it. But at the same time, we do get it and we understand it too. Have we executed a marketing plan? No, but we understand what that means. Um, so it's just, you know, giving us as much information as you can, as they can, um, is beneficial for both of us in the long run. Yeah. And that makes sense too. Cause I've been part of interview processes where, you know, say you're interviewing with, you know, it's three or four steps, you know, so you're meeting with one yeah. person and every time you meet with a new person, the job sounds different, you know, it's because mm -hmm. they're kind of looking right. at it through their perspective and, you know, right. so it makes sense that, um, if everyone is not, you know, if they're not doing the work on their end to really, really define what it is, you know, it's going right. to kind of come across a little all over the place. Yeah. You know? One person might think, oh, we really need this type of person. Another person thinks we need this type of person. The job description reads something completely different because that's what HR or recruiting has. I mean, it's, it's all got to work together. Everybody has to be on the same page and realize here's what our goal is. Here's what we're looking for this is the type of person we need yeah. to bring to our team. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah. <laughs> maybe you have an answer for this and maybe you don't, but I'm curious oh, okay. if you have an example of a company that you've worked for, a situation that yeah. um, a hiring manager, like you've had a really great experience and they approached it a little bit differently and it made it a lot easier for you to sell that company and sell that right. position to yeah there's there's handfuls of companies we work with that are really good about that and some of our favorite ones are small mom and pop shops right because um even though their team maybe is 10 to 15 people they really bring you in they make you understand what they're needing what their business purpose is what the business purpose is for this job that they're hiring for um, you get to meet the team, you get to feel the vibe, you get to see, you know, the work they've done. Um, those are the most successful because they treat us like a partner. You know, they answer our calls, we submit candidates to them. They get back to us within 24, 48 hours, whatever that might look like, whatever we establish. Um, and they just truly value our time. Um, and you know, are always there to answer our questions. And they always give us feedback on candidates, too, because that's another thing. Um, you know, we submit candidates for jobs all day long, and sometimes we'll just hear, oh, they're not a right fit. What makes them not a right fit, right? You're just seeing it on paper. What's the missing piece? And sometimes we don't get that feedback. Um, and that feedback is, in, is incredibly valuable to us, um, trying to be the matchmaker, right? But it's uh, valuable to the candidate as well. Like, here's what they were looking for that you're missing, um, you know, here's what you should expand upon. And they might come back and say, oh my gosh, I've done that. I didn't realize that was part of what they're looking for. You know, um, we have other clients as well that are bigger, right? They're in multiple states that we work with them. Um, and we've been brought in through HR. So HR connects us with the hiring managers, um, the team leaders, things like that. And so we really get to sit down with them and talk about their specific location, how big are their sites, you know, um, what are they looking for in this role? What are their goals? What are the main skills they're looking for? Because we don't only do creative, we do HR roles, engineering roles, and engineering is very different than creative, right? It's a different skill set. So just helping us to understand what they're looking for and why this type of engineer is different than the other types of engineers and here's why they need a specific kind um, and just 
the best relationships we have are the ones where the client, the internal recruiting team or the hiring managers are open to having conversations with us and just letting us pick their brain too about the industry um, and about the position and about the person they're looking to hire. Those are some of the most successful clients we have. Yeah, I like that. And I obviously that makes sense, right? The more information you right. have and the more information, not even information, but true information, right? It's not Correct. just like, yeah. here's the job description and explanation. It's like, here's our address. Here's the salary. Like right. that's all great. We need all of that, but that doesn't help us sell the company, right? right? Yeah. It doesn't help us make the candidate excited about why you should go work for this company, you know, what you get to do. Um, you know, I think what excites the candidate about the job is what we need to sell them on, right? So it's just the company culture, the information, what they do, do they, you know, believe in certain values that you align with? Things like that are always, um, you know, big sellers for candidates. Yeah, and I imagine you're seeing a trillion uh, job postings in your career, you know, I, that yeah. has to be a ton of what you're looking at. And I would be willing to guess, you can tell me if I'm wrong, that most of those fall very short on painting a very good picture about culture, painting a very good picture about like what the yeah. actual experience is to be a part of that family, that team. Right. Yeah, because it's just, it's, a job description, right? It's a list of duties, maybe who you're reporting to, what the team looks like, but it doesn't tell me about the company. Like, tell me about your culture. Tell me about some big accomplishment that the company has um, or a big event you guys are about to do. Just anything that can help me get to know the company and what they stand for. You know, I think companies need to do a better job about that. I think you had somebody on here talking about the company branding. That branding goes into that job description too. You know, what makes you stand out? What makes me want to go work for you? You know, you have to sell me on the company. You know, I know you're, as an employer, you're interviewing the candidates, but the candidates are also interviewing you to see if it's a company they want to work for and a team they want to work for. Yeah. Um, so it kind of goes both ways. Right. And you guys, you know, you can only work with what you're given, right? So like... Right. If, you know, it's your job to sell that, uh, sell that brand, that employee, that experience of being an employee there as much as it is theirs, right. then like, right. obviously, if you don't have much to work with, it's like, well, right. I have it's a job hard. description. I can, <laughs> like, right. I, I can Google it. There. I can look at Glassdoor. Yeah, I can. I've known some people that have worked there, you know, but that doesn't go very far. You know, it's yeah. just getting that internal knowledge about them. Like, are there any cool perks? Like, you know, agency side, they've got usually ping pong tables and they like to have fun. They work hard. They play hard. Like, give us some of the perks of working with the company. Yeah. That's a huge selling point. You know, do you work remote? I know in a time right now, most of us are remote. Um, but what are some of those perks you get to work from home every couple of days or you know you get extra vacation days here and there just what are the perks you know of working with the company yeah something too that i'm curious about um i think you guys are obviously this really valuable resource to a company because not only are you kind of this connection between the people and the company but i think you must be getting a little bit more truthful information and feedback from talent that's going in and interviewing mm -hmm. at these companies. And, you know, they might go in, have a kind of bad interview and just be like, okay, cool. Like, thanks, you know? Yeah. And then, but come back to you and say like, oh my gosh, like, you know, so you're getting the real truth, right? A lot of times yes. that people are not telling the company. So I wonder if, right. if, if any of these hiring managers are coming to you and saying like, hey, what are people saying about us? Like, what is our actual reputation here? Because I think people operate on this idea that like, there's nothing wrong with our hiring system, you know, the way we do hiring, right. you know, it's that's how everyone else does it. But I think there, right. if you dig a little deeper, there's gotta be some more information that um, companies could have access to that they're just not really looking for. You know, and we try and give feedback to our employers too. Like, hey, you know, we we talked to this candidate. Here's what we kind of sold them on. And then they go in for an interview and they find out, 
it's not that at all. It's completely different. Um, so we need to be on the same page with you, um, with what you're looking for. A lot of times too, it's like, okay, we need somebody between these hours, but we might need you after hours. We might need you weekends. Well, that's valuable information for us, especially if somebody is not available for overtime, they're not available nights and weekends. And so when we get that feedback from the candidates, um, we do give it to the hiring manager, the person we're working with, like, here's what they're kind of telling us. Um, can you tell us more about this? And like, oh yeah, we forgot to mention that kind of why we go through these processes with you, you know, to fully understand what you're needing. I get it. You know, sometimes we forget some little piece of it. Um, but it's all valuable information and we do give feedback too. like if a client comes or a candidate comes back and says, you know, I was interviewing and I met with four or five different people and this one guy was just totally checked out. He wasn't even listening to me. He was typing on his computer. Um, he didn't ask me any questions. We do tell them that, you know, they just felt like the team wasn't engaged. And so that's kind of a red flag for them. Is that how it's going to be if they're working on site, this person is really not going to be engaged. And, you know, if I have a question, what does that look like? Are they going to want to work with me? Are they just kind of zoned out? Um, so we do provide that feedback to the clients as we get it too, because it's valuable for them as well. Yeah. I mean, it seems like that would be, uh, invaluable to, uh, a, a client of yours, right? Like right. the more feedback you can get, the better to improve your processes, improve that experience, you right. know, because obviously that is part of your brand, right? As an employer right. is what's that interview process like? What's the feedback yeah. process like, you know, what kind of communication am I getting, you know, and right. all that stuff. And I think if you don't have a good approach to that and you don't care about improving that, that reflects, yeah, right? Good. Like people, people right. notice that people feel that and it has a yeah. either conscious or subconscious kind of imprint on your right. opinion of that place, you know? And I've even heard candidates, you know, that are applying on their own, interviewing on their own and things are going well, right? They have one, two, three interviews and then they hear nothing from the company ever again. And so as a recruiter, we try and make sure we connect with all of our candidates, whether the client is moving forward with them, not moving forward with them, providing feedback. So they have that closure because I know now, especially now, I feel like with COVID, there's just so many things left open-ended that so many candidates are, are waiting, right? They're waiting to see, am I going to get an offer? Are they going to move me to the next round? And they're just left hanging by the company. And so that they get a bad taste in their mouth if they never hear anything back, right? So then they're like, oh, I don't want to work for that company. They interviewed me and then I never heard back versus, you know, if you at least give them the feedback, they feel like, okay, maybe down the road, if there's another role, I'll apply again. Um, and maybe I'll tell my friends to apply versus, oh, I never heard from them. I'd never apply to them. I'd never work for them. And that goes for us <clears throat> too, right? Like we need to be able to tell the candidate, you're not a fit for this position. Let's explore other positions or the client passed on you because you don't meet what they're looking for. But let's, you know, work on other opportunities. So it's just always giving that feedback and closure from one position to the next so they know where they stand. Just some basic and I think decency, that's right? Lacking. <laughs> some basic right. decency. I know. Yeah, it's like common sense, but I know time gets away from us, right? So again, ask for forgiveness. Sorry for the delay. I just wanted to give you an update. And I think people appreciate that. And they appreciate we're all human, right? We all make mistakes. We all might forget to make a phone call today, but let's do it the next day, yeah. you know, and just keep people in the loop. Yeah, I think it's just weird, you know, because it seems like the things that make the biggest difference are hard to do sometimes, you know, like mm -hmm. it is difficult to have a good plan to follow up with every candidate and to, right. you know, give feedback on every employee that you interview. But it's like, this, this has become a really common topic, you know, with the people I've talked to on the show is like, there yeah. are all these places that are challenging and they are hard, but that's a good thing, right? Because that creates right. an opportunity for your company to stand out in those areas, right? Yeah. And it's hard, you know, when you have to make that phone call and tell somebody they didn't get the job and they're super excited about it and they feel like it's a good match and they just picked another candidate that maybe had a little more experience in one area or than another. And it's not that they did anything wrong. 
it's just the client went with somebody else. I mean, those are hard conversations, but um, we have to do them. And they, most of the time, candidates understand, but it's just making them feel like, okay, on to the next. I have closure on this one. I'm not just waiting in the wings, waiting to see if I'm going to get an offer or a next interview. Yeah. I mean, I've been there and it feels like crap to just like, it does. It does. Like, uh, maybe I'll hear, I don't know. I mean, right. You know, it's, it's like, that. and then you don't want to follow up too much, but you want to follow up cause you just want to know what's happening. Right. So. Yeah. Just some, I, yeah. like, cause I'm in that position too, where it's like, I don't care, you know, if I don't fit for whatever reason, or if you don't see me as a right, good fit, tell me. I'm not offended. You know, it's like, right. I don't, it's not my company. I don't know exactly what you're right. trying to do, but, um, yeah. Just like a, hey, thanks, like, right. you know, here's what, yeah. you know, whatever. I mean, feed, you know, feedback beyond that obviously is good, but like, right. it's like, that's like a five-star experience where like, I feel like yeah. most experiences are like a 0.5 star. It's like, you, you don't even have to do totally. all of that, but, you know, getting the, getting totally. the generic email response that's just like, hey, we've decided to go in another direction. You know, it's like, cool, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, at least you have some closure. It's not very personal, but you know, you know where you stand. Yeah. So another thing I wanted to talk to you about, um, and this might get a little juicy, is oh, um, gosh. so recruiters kind of get a bad rap sometimes. Um, totally. From you know, from my research and you know, just kind of reading things, there's a lot of people out there who think recruiters are just after the money. They don't really care about. Um, right. you know, they don't really care about culture fit. They don't care about whether someone stays, you know, longer than, you yeah. know, as long as I make my paycheck, like I don't really care. Right. Obviously there are recruiters out there like that. Um, and mm -hmm. obviously you're not one of them. Um, no, no, yeah. <laughs> I know. I've talked to so many people. It's so funny. I met someone at a networking event. Um, just introducing, you know, names and saying, you know, I'm a recruiter and they go off on tangents about not liking recruiters. I understand it. There's plenty of recruiters out there that, you know, it's all about the numbers game. How many people can you interview? How many people are you going to throw at this client and hope that they stick, you know, hope that it's a fit for what they're looking for. Um, it, it's, it never works out, right? Those candidates never stay at the job. Those recruiters, most of the time, never stay as recruiters. You know, it's not a long-term goal of theirs. It's probably like a stepping stone. I just needed a job, so I'm going to be a recruiter for a little while. Um, you know, we take the time to get to know our candidates, to see what they're interested in. You know, if they're like, I don't want to work in the financial industry, great. I'm not going to call you with financial industry jobs. You know, where I hear a lot of times, oh, I keep getting all of these emails about certain jobs that aren't even in my wheelhouse, right? Like I'm sending engineering jobs to a creative director. They're hmm. like, yeah, why? And I hear that about other agencies. Um, there are plenty of fantastic recruiters out there. I follow a lot of them on LinkedIn and they give great advice and, you know, keep your head up. But at the same time, there's a lot of not so great recruiters out there. And so it's it's worth a candidate's while to check out several and see the one you vibe with. Um, and see what it's kind of like you're interviewing for a job, right? Find your recruiter that you like working with. That's it fits in the industry. You're looking for a job. You know, it's like salespeople, right? There's some really bad car salespeople out there and there's some really good ones that you enjoyed working with, right? It's just finding what works for you. Um, and don't be afraid to have that conversation with a recruiter. Like, Hey, you know, I talked to you, but I've never heard from you again. Or, um, you keep sending me jobs, but they're not the jobs I'm looking for. Like, tell them. You know, sometimes it is you might get a blast for a job that's like, hey, do you know anybody? Because we all know people, right, in different industries, and that's okay. Um, but if you feel like you're not being heard, I mean, have a conversation with the recruiter and let them know. Um, you know, and, and for me, I like to get to know the people, you know, especially people who have just moved here. Why did you move here? You know, what are you looking for? What get you excited. And sometimes you're like, Oh, I love nonprofits. I love volunteering. Okay. That's the kind of roles they would love to be in. Or I'm a very athletic person. I like to go hiking and I, I'm an outdoors person, like just getting to know them. And I'm not saying go out to coffee with every single person. I mean, you could, I mean, that's always a nice touch, but just getting to know them more on a personal level than where'd you work? What do you want to make? Where do you live? What are your skills? You know, it's, it's a little more involved than that. 
which I think unfortunately a lot of recruiters do. Okay, what salary range? What's the job title? What part of the valley you want to work in or what part of the country you want to work in? And that's all they go for. You know, they're missing that personal level of getting to know somebody and just having a conversation with them. Yeah, that makes sense. And I can imagine nowadays with the introduced introduction of new technology and things making it even easier to source and connect and do all this stuff yeah. that the personal touch element uh, can get overlooked pretty easily. And it's not that hard, you know, again, having a, you know, you go through a regular interview, getting all of that pertinent information, which is needed, but talk for a couple more minutes. Just what are you into? What do you do on the weekends? You know, just having a more personal connection with them, I think is helpful, especially like if you have kids and you start talking about kids or a vacation you have coming up, it's just, it, it feels more genuine um, to the person than just a numbers game. Oh, they just need to get me in their system. That's really good advice, I guess, on the job seeker side of things. Yeah. Um, what would you say for people who are looking to maybe find an agency outsource some of yeah. this hiring stuff how do you differentiate you know if you're shopping around between agencies and stuff how do you differentiate between these people care oops i hit my microphone these people care <laughs> about the people they're they're going that extra mile and doing the things that yeah. you just kind of laid out versus like oh these are very like who knows what kind of candidates we're going to get from this place you know, I think it's the same for the companies too, right? They can call us and they can interview us and see what we're about. Um, you know, we are more of a boutique staffing agency, but we do cover the United States, right? So we have recruiters that we can work in different areas um, across the country. And I just think we do have that approach of we want to get to know you. Um, we want to help you. We want to make sure we get you the best candidates we can. We, we're not just going to throw candidates at you that match a title and a salary because we think that's what you're looking for. Um, so I think it's okay for the clients too to shop around, right? Like talk to different recruiters, talk to different agencies and see what's going to work best for you. Um, you know, because a lot of companies are like that. It's just about the numbers and getting people in front of them. But if that's not what's working for them, because we hear that all the time, you know, we're working with another agency, but they're not giving us what we're looking for. You know, they don't understand marketing. They don't understand creative, right? Um, so they need somebody that focuses in that space or they don't understand engineering or HR, whatever it might be. Find an agency that matches what you're looking for. Yeah. That obviously makes a lot of sense, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, not... we don't do accounting and, you know, there, there's, you know, legal and there's so many different niche areas out there. Um, could we pick it up? Totally. Right. It's just a learning curve. It's just meeting with the clients and learning what they do. But we truly focus on that marketing and creative piece and are heavily involved in, you know, networking events in those spaces so we can continue to learn and grow and network with the candidates. Um, so again, we can provide the best candidates to our employers, yeah. our clients. That makes sense, right? Go to, go to the yeah. people who like care and are proven to, um, right. you know, swim in the lane you're looking to swim yeah, in, you know? Yeah, totally. So totally. I'm curious if there's anything that stands out to you when I ask you like what the most common maybe misconceptions are when companies come to you looking to fill positions? Like obviously you hear conversations about like time to fill being this really important thing. And like, is right. that truly that important or not? You know, so I just wonder if anything sticks out to you when I say like, what, you know, when I ask you like what these misconceptions are that you end up dealing with a lot? Yeah, a lot of times they'll come to us, you know, to fill a need and they'll think we have just pools and pools of candidates, which we do but it really is based on what they're looking for. So let's say they want a graphic designer. Yeah, we have a list of graphic designers we use, but they need a graphic de designer that does print and digital, maybe a little video, right? So that's not a big list of candidates. We might only have a couple and maybe they're not even available at this moment. Um, so I think a misconception is they think we have all of these people ready to go, which most times we do. Um, but truly it just depends exactly on what they're looking for 
as far as the skill set, their timelines, is this a contract role? Is this a permanent role? So there's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, most times for contract roles, yes, we have candidates ready to go and that meet most of the boxes. Uh, but sometimes they just think they can call us and be like, hey, I need a creative director. Who do you have right now? Like some of these positions take a little more time to make sure it's a good fit. And I think, again, that goes back to making sure it's a culture fit, skill fit. Yeah, we do have pools of people ready, readily available to go for work, um, but are they going to match what you're looking for um, right out the gate? So that's where we try and take a little bit more time to customize who we're sending over to make sure they are a fit for the job they're looking to fill. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it actually kind of sparks another thought. And this is kind of a controversial topic too, because uh, well, you just, I've just heard about this a lot recently, which is like the resume, you know, Th yeah. this is like this document that's the holy grail of who makes it and who doesn't. And I wonder from your position, you're obviously meeting people, getting to know them mm -hmm. first, and then, yeah. you know, this thing gets handed off to a company. So like how many, I wonder if you could kind of quantify like how many people are getting dropped off or not even getting a chance because this document doesn't like check however many boxes? So good question. Definitely. I look at resumes first, right? I would just want to see where they've worked, some skills, some education. Do I dive deep into it off the bat? No. Um, especially in the creative field, it's more about the portfolio, right? Like what type of work have they done? Who have they done it for? <clears throat> so a lot of that resume content is on the portfolio because I can see who they worked for. Um, I do think resumes get dumped off very quickly. You know, we all have short term <laughs> like attention spans right now. And so literally hiring managers glance over it, right? And they have something in mind that they're looking for. Maybe it's a degree. Maybe it's um, specific job title. Maybe it's the type of company or industry experience they're looking for. And if they don't see that, a lot of times they'll move on to the next. Um, I couldn't give you hard numbers on that, but I know most people spend, what, maybe five, six seconds glancing over a resume and just to pick out those key things. Um, and then if maybe if something catches their eye, they see a lot of those accomplishments. Sometimes accomplishments popping out um, are caught before you know the companies they've worked for. So accomplishments are key on resumes you know, to show what you've done for your past companies, how you can add value to your future companies. Um, but time on resumes is, is very short. Yeah. At first glance. And, yeah. you know, I think there's a lot, and you just gave some just now, there's a lot of information out there for how applicants, like what applicants can do to make their resume better. But I wonder right. if there's any information for recruiters and for hiring managers to kind of flip that and say like, look, here's what you can do to glean more information about a person beyond just this piece of paper, you know, because yeah, obviously I mean, you're limited with what you can really know about a person. Right. With that. Right. Cover letters are great. I know that's one of those hit or miss things too. Some people love them. Some people hate them. But I think that is a chance for you to really sell yourself like, hey, here's what I've done for this company that is an in line with what you're looking to do. I can do it. And that so I read that before even going to the cover letter. Um, portfolios, again, are huge, especially in the creative field. I know a lot of people go straight to the portfolio. They don't even look at the resume. They don't care where you worked or who you've done it for. They just want to see your style, right, and what you've done. So they go there first. Um, and I think it truly depends on the role too. Like if this is executive level, you should have a lot of accomplishments. You should have that cover letter, right? If you're entry level, um, show me the projects you've done. Show me, you know, what your leadership role was on some of these projects. You know, I know a lot of school projects tell me what you did. Did you take the lead? Were you project managing? Um, you know, tell me your skills. That's a big thing too. What software tools you've used, um, so there's a lot of different things you can do with your resume based on your skill level and experience level. I wonder too, like it seems, you know, job descriptions for the most part seem to be pretty, pretty 
similar across the board, you know, it's a basic description of whatever. So I wonder if there's a way for hiring managers and recruiters to kind of step up their game or be a little bit different within their job descriptions. And maybe if they're looking to attract certain qualities in people, certain characteristics in people beyond just like, can you, uh, you know, do social media? Can you write emails or whatever? I think it's an opportunity just in the job description to really um, make a statement about the kind of people that you're looking for and, right. you know, kind of attract a different breed of people than just like getting shotgun blast of uh, right. resumes, you know, and maybe that makes their job easier. Maybe it makes the, the well, talent think- they're sifting through more compatible with their company too. Right. And I think that goes back to the culture, right? Like, here's what we're looking for. Somebody that likes to work hard and play hard and can work with the team and collaborate and come up with new ideas. Um, I think it's just selling that culture too and about what you're going to be doing um, for the company, getting them excited about the job, saying this is what you get to do, not here's your job duties, but like look what you get to be involved in. I think it just raises the excitement level like, oh my gosh, I get to do that. I get to help with this or list some of the big projects that your team just wrapped up. Say our team just did X, Y, Z and you know, the next project just like this, you'll be a part of like get them hyped up about the job. Don't make, you know, dry, boring job posts. I mean, that's what we all see, right? Like we're all guilty of posting those, but let's get the candidate excited. Like, oh my gosh, this sounds like a fun place to work or you know, it sounds like a lot of work, but I'm up for the challenge. Um, just let them know what they're getting into. Yeah. And it almost seems like, you know, you're going to get what you give in that situation, right? Like yeah. if you want a generic pool of talent that's, you know, right. coming for a paycheck or whatever, keep creating the generic, you know, job posting. Right. That's fine. That's what you're going to get. But, you yeah. know. And there's a place for all of those too, sure. right? Yeah. Like there's some people that that's what they're looking for. They're just looking for a job. They don't really care about advancement. They just want to do some good work. That's great. There's a place for them. But then there's the, you know, the other crowd that really wants to advance. They want to do something cool and fun and hip and, you know, get known out there for doing something. Then let's make those job descriptions more exciting. Yeah, because, I mean, i got to say I've seen about 50,000 job descriptions that, you know, they're doing what we're saying, kind of. It's like our company culture. And you've got 17 paragraphs of you know, Too long. we believe in Nobody's our people, you know, and it's just like, okay, it's like, you're not trying. It's like, okay, you copy and pasted right. that from your website or wherever About you got me, that, yeah. you know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's just, if you're not willing to put in effort to make your, yeah. to make this see, feel like an opportunity, you know, not just right. like a, right. Uh, an obligation like well if i want to fill this position i gotta do a job posting or whatever it's like yeah like owning that and just being like whatever opportunity you can take to be different you know i think it's just to me seems like way worth you know i mean if you're gonna go pay an agency like whatever fee to fill this position and it's like it's not cheap to hire somebody right so right is it really that big of a deal to spend an extra two, three, five, however many hours to like right. make that thing stand out. I don't know. I feel like. Yeah. Make it enticing. And then I think the more enticing it is, the more candidates you're going to get too. Um, and make sure you can back up all those claims you say in this job posting in an interview. Cause somebody might call you on it and say, Oh, tell me about this. What'd you guys do? And then they're like, what, what did we post? They, you know, forget. And I've seen that happen. You know, they don't even know what they're selling. <laughs> you know, in these job posts. So make sure you can back it up. I mean, people read the internet, they read Glassdoor, they read reviews. Um, So if you're selling this, make sure your Glassdoor reviews match that and you have, you know, happy um, employees working for you. Obviously, there's always going to be some disgruntled ones. And that's a given. That's at any company. Um, But make sure for the most part, those reviews are are good reviews and people really love the company and the culture that they're working for. Yeah. And I think to me, you know, if you're if you're struggling to sit down and explain what's unique about your company and explain what's compelling about working there, it's yeah. like you've got a bigger issue, right? Like you might you need do. to go address some yeah. culture stuff. You might need to go address right. 
a much bigger issue than writing this job description right now, you know? Totally. Hmm. Totally. That's a whole other conversation. Right, yeah. But unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. But one true. that seems like, you know, needs to be had yeah. in a lot yeah. of places. For sure. For sure. But, okay, well, I think, you know, we're about wrapped up here. We've covered a lot of cool stuff and I think tons of valuable things in here. Um, yeah. I just want to ask one last thing just about kind of the future of um, recruiting. Like, where do you see... Yeah you know, what do you see being some of the biggest issues, topics, like things that change the way agencies and internal recruiting kind of work together and um, yeah. hopefully moving it in a better direction? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like artificial intelligence happening out there right now, right, with recruiting. So you pop on a website and you have this bot talking to you, which I think is is a good thing, right? I just hope it doesn't filter out a lot of candidates because somehow they feel intimidated by the bot but there's a lot of artificial intelligence happening with recruiting um a lot of just shifts with everybody working remote um so that's a whole different dynamic to work with in the in the job marketplace you know um which is a good problem to have right because if your team is remote you have access to more candidates now which is a good problem to have where before, you know, if you were pigeonholed to, I need somebody in this city, in this state, you were limited on candidates. Um, so I think unfortunately the pandemic, um, the one good thing has allowed a lot of um, companies to hire remote and get talent that they never would have imagined being able to work with before. So I think it's a good shift. Um, you know, there's still a lot of clients that don't work with staffing agencies because they have their own internal teams, and that's great. Um, I just hope in the future, you know, they are open to working with staffing agencies because we do, you know, a lot of that work for them and, and tailor the candidates versus, you know, having to have them go through all of these candidates that apply. We make sure, you know, they get the qualified ones, and we do a lot of that heavy lifting for them. Um so I know a lot will be changing down the road. Still a lot of uncertainty with just the job market in general at this point. Um, but I feel like we're we're moving in a, in a good direction finally. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's an interesting opportunity, interesting opportunity, oppor time, interesting time. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Interesting time. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah it's, it's like. It's just so hard to tell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's weird because like, Companies now have access to talent from across the world, but on the yeah. flip side, now talent can go work anywhere in the world. So you almost right. have to compete even more for you that do. top level talent. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what emerges, you know, as as companies kind of try to compete and uh, what they end up offering to entice right. people to come work for them. You know, yeah. Yeah, they're going to have to step up their game for sure, especially, you know, if they can go work in a, for a company in New York City or San Francisco. OK, which one has the better deal? But I get to live in Texas or Iowa or wherever it is, you know, which one sounds better, which one's more appealing. Right. You know, so a lot of options out there for sure. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. on, Amy. We got a lot of good stuff thank there. Thank you. Um, why don't you tell people how they can get a hold of you? Obviously, you're on LinkedIn, yeah, but uh, LinkedIn. you, your company, Staff Strong, Staffing Strong, and yeah, I am on LinkedIn, Amy Roberts, um, and it's staffingstrong.com. If you want to check us out, we are on social media: LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, you know, so feel free to follow us, connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Shoot me a message. Um, definitely love to connect. All right. Well, thanks again for coming on. And we've come a long way Thank since you. those college days, right? Right. <laughs> a long way. <laughs> all right. Well, we've all grown up. I know, <laughs> right? Yeah. Hopefully anyways. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.